Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Taigano no Chi. So last time I think I left you off right as we started following Keisuke around. Um, at least I think, it's been a while since I played. Yeah, let's see, there was no... Where from to hide in the ruined city. He entered an empty building nearby, sat down near the entrance off to the side, where he'd be able to respond swiftly no matter what happened. The moment he laid his head against the wall and closed his eyes, a murky exhaustion came over him. Visions flickered behind his eyelids. The scarlet dance floor. Takaru's mad laughter. So he shut them tighter, then tighter still, as though to drive his consciousness into oblivion. Wait, wait, is this Akira? I'm so confused. Sleep spoiled him like mud. This might be Akira. It's been too long since I played. He didn't know how long he had slept, though fatigue and pain still lingered in his body. He felt considerably lighter than before. Okay, I guess that's Akira right after escaping from Takeru. Or Takeru. Idiots. He extracted his phone, which he was using in place of a clock, from his jacket pocket and checked its screen. It was close to sundown and the area was already dark. Where does he charge his phone? Really? I want to know, are there just outlets? around anywhere in Igra? Despite the fact that Emma had yet to contact him, he had not once used the device as intended. It was still fairly convenient to have. Akira went outside, planning to head for the hotel. It was the only neutral zone he knew of, now that the club was gone. What had become of Takeru since then? Was he still looking for Akira, or... Why did he care what happened to the man? If he ran to Takeru again, he'd be lucky to escape with his life, pussy. He, well, Takeru's dead. And yet the fact that was that Akira didn't want Takeru dead. He didn't really understand why he felt that way. That's kind of weird. Perhaps it was because... Kind of kind of real pussy behavior. Because Perhaps because it, he had caught a glimpse of something inside Takeru. Something... Uh, seething passion that set him apart from the other Igra fighters. But there were more pressing matters. From Akira's current location, the fastest way to the hotel was probably to head back through the Nightlight District, so he took off looping down the dim alleyways. As he neared the club, he spotted people standing in the street. Judging by their scowls, they were regulars who had arrived to find that their favorite spot was permanently closed. It's just a little blood on the dance floor, come on. Several were peering past the open door that led to the basement entrance. The scent of iron brushed his nose. He sped up, hoping to shake the memory of that deep red tableau. <laughs> ここ結構良かったんだけどね。ラインも他のとこ Akira slowed and bent his ear. Two men were talking, one in a blue t-shirt, one in black. The blood-covered man they spoke of. Takiru? Maybe he was still nearby. Distracted by his thoughts, he failed to notice the duo turning to walk past him. His shoulder bumped against the man in the blue shirt. The man cocked his head and drew his brows together. The class is streaked punk glare. The man grabbed Akira's shoulder before he could walk away. Is he gonna make a pass at me? Akira turned his head to regard the man coldly. These two meant nothing to him, and he had places to be. Their, dark their faces darkened. They had picked up on his lack of regard. Not that he tried to hide it. Nanto 
The man spun a here and grabbed him by the shirt collar, then froze and let out a low whistle. His eyes were glued to the tag around Akira's neck. <laughs> Does he actually think he can take me? The man holding Akira's shirt cracked his knuckles with a predatory smile. Both men were wearing tags, eager fighters obviously, and probably the sort who joined for the chance to kill. They seemed fairly confident in their strength as well. The man put on a mocking smile. By the time the words had left his lips, his knife was already out of its sheath. With one smooth motion, he traced a bright arc in the air before his eyes. A faint red line appeared on the man's cheek. He still had no idea what happened. Meanwhile, Akira slipped his grip and stepped back, then pointed to his own cheek to keep the man in the loop. The instant the man touched the wound on his cheek, he went bright red and erupted in anger. He yanked a switchblade from his back pocket and opened the blade with a click. In contrast, Akira's head was perfectly cool. He felt nothing. It was like being back in blast. At some point, a circle of spectators had formed around them. From time to time, they burst out jeering. Knife at the ready, the man dropped into a loose stance, eyes nailed to a cure, and began circling for an opening. The man took the initiative. Dancing on the balls of his feet like a boxer, he closed the range quickly and slashed at Akira's neck. Akira dodged the slash and answered with one of his own, a probing strike designed to take his opponent's measure. The crowd roared its approval, but Akira paid it no mind. Though he had it meant for this to happen, the fact was that he was now in an Igra match. He felt confident of victory. He might be using a blade in place of his fists, but other than that, it was the same as Blaster. His opponent's swings were wide, but surprisingly accurate. He was quick to recover, even when he lost the tempo. Akira dodged nimbly left and right to avoid the fierce slashes aimed at his throat, all the while watching for the chance that was certain to come. <laughs> His enemy's attacks were growing sloppier. Anger and impatience had a way of doing that. And this guy didn't look like the patient type. If Akira could just rile him up a little more... <coughs> a thrust came. At that precise moment, Akira dropped his hips and lunged, raking his blade along the man's arm. The man flinched, then bristled with rage. But his lips twisted into a grin when he realized that Akira was now too close to evade. <laughs> He unleashed a mighty downward blow, as if to split Akira's skull wide open. Akira pivoted, translating the rotation of his hips into a powerful overhead parry. A sharp clang filled the air, and the knife flew from his enemy's hand. The man recoiled, but Akira seized his arm and twisted, forcing him uh, to the ground, then quickly straddled his stomach. He laid his knife against the man's throat, and there he stopped. The crowd had fallen silent, entranced by the beauty of Akira's motions. <laughs> Akira's really stroking his own ego in this in this <laughs> narration. Like, what? Everything from the lunge to the final mount had been one unbroken flow. Yeah, they're so in awe of you. They all just want to... Uh, they all just want a piece of that booty. It was, it was over. The man laid sprawled on the asphalt, his back flat against the ground. <laughs> Humiliation turned the man's face crimson. Akira didn't consider killing him. He wasn't worth it. This fight had been uh, had done nothing to make his heart race. It was time to take his tags and get out of here. He reached down, but the man grabbed his hands. Still, the man wouldn't let go. His eyes are burning with hate. In a suicidal display of defiance, the man punched Akira in the face. The taste of blood filled his mouth. That instant, a spark was born in Akira's deathly silent mind. Is he about to, like, murder him? It took, I mean, if that's all it takes for you to murder someone, like, maybe you got problems. It took, it took fire in the blink of an eye. 
Wait, it took fire in the blink of an eye? Um, luring him towards a red hallucination. What? I don't even understand what that sentence was. A red hallucination? It resembled that blood-soaked dance floor. A numbing euphoria filled his brain. His pulse thundered in his ears. He hadn't felt anything while fighting this man. But now the man was right there and beneath his skin. There surely lurked a far redder ecstasy waiting for him. Okay. Before he knew it, Akira had flung his knife aside and was bashing the man's face with his bloodied fists. It felt as if he were watching himself from someplace far away. Through the red veil separating his mind from his body, he could just make out the exquisite sensation of flesh and bone smashing together. It was a glob of blood splattering against his cheek that finally brought Akira back to himself. Why that? At that moment, the crowd's cheers and boos and heckling rushed into his ears as one giant wave. It was uncomfortably hot. He wiped the blood off his cheek, picked up his knife, and tore the tag away from the man's chest. After taking the remaining four tags from the man's back pocket, Akira rose to his feet. He hadn't realized that he was panting. The man twitched beneath him, his face red and swollen. Ah, oh, he's still alive. Well, come on, pussy. He probably wasn't dead. Assaulted by a sudden headache, Akira pushed through the ring of onlookers that had closed around him. The blood dripping from his fist left dark stains in the ground below. He shook his hands off and wiped them on the sleeves of his jacket. As he walked away from the milling crowd, he checked his tags in his hand. A king of spades and four pigs. He put them in his jacket pocket and exhaled deeply. Back there, he felt like a man possessed. That had not been the first time that the sight of blood had excited him, but it had been the first time he'd lost control so completely. If he had kept punching the man, he would have killed him. And nobody would have condemned him for it. Here life was cheap and death was in abundance. Hadn't he come hoping to witness death with his very own eyes? Just now, that had been his chance. It was exactly what he'd wanted. Even in Blaster, he had beaten men within an inch of their lives. It should have been easy to take one more step. So, why hadn't he? Something nagged at his mind. What did he truly... <laughs> Suddenly, Akira came to a stop. A human shape had appeared in the alleyway ahead. His heart pounded. He hadn't sensed anyone else nearby. Had he been too distracted by his thoughts? Even then, he should have noticed before they got this close. Who was it? No ordinary Toshima street fighter could have snuck up on him like this. The road behind Akira was empty, but he couldn't turn his back. Not while he had no read on the threat. The moon hung misty in the night painted sky. The shadows were thicker than ever. If he wanted a better look at the stranger, he would need to get closer. The shape let out a deep, throaty laugh, as if amused by Akira's display of caution. Who's this? He couldn't believe his ears. The shape walked forward slowly until at last he emerged into the faint moonlight. Oh, is this Keisuke? Oh, I guess Keisuke's on Rhine. Good for you, King. We've, we've already learned that drugs are very good for you. Shock rippled through Akira. It was Keisuke. And yet, the first emotion to rise in Akira's chest was not relief, but doubt. Was it really him? I mean, he looked kind of uglier now, but... I don't know. Maybe we just have to let that go. His features were unchanged. Well, I mean... I don't know. Akira had recognized him at a glance, but the look on his face was utterly unfamiliar. A harsh light shone in his eyes. The corners of his mouth were hiked up in a sneer. His mere presence exerted a physical pressure. <laughs> Spiritual pressure? Okay. I guess it's bleach. Words tumbled from Akira's mouth, the only words he could find. He couldn't tear his eyes away. Akira 
Keisuke had never spoken this way before. He really had changed. It was like talking to a stranger who had borrowed Keisuke's form. He has so much pent up homosexual rage. This is gonna get ugly. Keisuke sauntered towards him, a faint smile playing about his mouth. Akira retreated a step. <laughs> uh, why are his eyes looking down so much? Looks kind of weird. It's not like he's like looking into Akira's eyes. It's like he's looking into Akira's mouth or something. It's strange. Very strange. How do I hide the text box? Yeah, space. Because it's a Japanese man. Crazy. Quick as a snake, he caught Akira around the shoulders with his arm and pulled him close. There was no chance to run. It had happened so fast, Keisuke's face loomed before him. <laughs> what he saw in the depths of Keisuke's eyes left Akira aghast. They bore no trace of Ke the Keisuke he had known. Instead, they blazed with a dark, vivid hatred. He instinctively tried to turn his face away, but Keisuke grabbed him by the chin. <laughs> Keisuke cocked his head and smiled, as if consoling a child. There was a strange tone of innocence in Keisuke's voice. While kneading Akira's jaw tenderly with his fingers, he continued in a low whisper. Keisuke nodded cheerfully. A moment later, he frowned and touched his fingers to Akira's lips. Unnerved by the condescension in Keisuke's voice, Akira pressed him for an answer. Akira, see you. Casey answered with a thin, bloodless smile. Club. Club? I mean... Did you put on a hazmat suit before you murdered everyone, or do you just have an extra spare change of clothes? Somehow. Do you literally... Well, maybe he did, I don't know. Maybe he did bring an exact, you know, change of clothes. Without thinking, his eyes went to Case Case. <laughs> Has his nose always been this ugly? Do you see that bump in it? God, that looks bad. Has it always been that ugly, or is this only after he got... He went on his drug trip? It took him a while to understand. The words resonated without meaning at first, and he had to digest them one at a time. But as he chewed them over, th their import became clear, and a chill ran down his spine. It couldn't be. The gruesome spectacle of the club was still fresh in his mind. He had assumed it was Takaru's work, but no. Takaru's presence there had been a coincidence, or else because he had been tailing Akira. The one truly responsible for that massacre was... He couldn't believe it. Oops. Well, we love a villain that makes an entrance, you know? It was a great debut. Was this man grinning at the memory of blood? Really, Keisuke? Without letting go of Akira's jaw, he raised his free hand to stroke his cheek. The fingers on Akira's jaw tightened. Black loathing bloomed behind Keisuke's eyes. 
narrowed to a squint to accommodate a smile. There could be no doubt that it was meant for him. <laughs> a shudder ran down Akira's spine, and he fought to escape with all, his strength he, all the strength he possessed. Keisuke laughed, a husky sound like an animal toying with its prey. Akira! <laughs> He cradled Akira's face in both hands and leaned in. His teeth gently raked the tip of Akira's no nose. Kind of a weird foreplay, but okay. <laughs> you maybe gonna stick your tongue up his nostril now? See if you can get a little snack to eat? Overwhelmed by a dizzying surge of panic, Akira squeezed his eyes firmly shut. In the darkness, he felt Keisuke's lips glide from his cheek to his jaw, then from his jaw to below his ear. Keisuke's voice was a loving murmur. Well, this homosexual rage is more than I expected. Don't you want to love him a little bit first? <laughs> And then in case then and then Keisuke pulled away. It was all Akira could do to keep his knees from trembling. Despair yawned like a pit beneath him. Keisuke smiled fiendishly. Case he had seen him. Maybe this just means they're right for each other. No, I... Words of protest smoldered at the back of Akira's throat. He clenched his fist, struggling against the emotions triggered by Keisuke's metamorphosis, by the inescapable fact of his raw, naked malice. Keisuke gave him one last piercing look, then turned and strolled away. Oh, come on! I was hoping, again, we would finally get our first scene, but it's just like... Girl, they... Both this game and... I feel like by now, even in Dramatical Murder, we would have had our first scene. It's just crazy. But both this game and Dramatical Murder take take way too long to get into it. It's like, enough with it. Like, if you're going to spend so much time on this, on the, on the plot, you know, outside of the romance and all the fooling around, then you gotta at least make the plot interesting, right? I'm sorry, but... The plot is lacking. Where is it? Because it is lacking and it is bad. Just like in Dramatical Murder, someone's gonna get angry at me for that. Dramatical Murder was terrible, its world building was terrible, it made no sense. The plot made no sense. It was... and it was boring. I'm sorry. KC gave him one last piercing look, then turned and strolled away. At this rate, Akira would lose him yet again. And yet, he couldn't bring himself to call Keisuke back. Shonk turned to nausea, surging upwards towards his throat. He slumped against the wall, covering his mouth and closing his eyes. The world was spinning around him. Keisuke wants to kill me. Why? The questions kept looping in his head, even though no amount of thinking produced an answer. Akira clenched his teeth, struggling to restore some order to his thoughts. It felt like his head would explode otherwise. By the time he looked up, Keisuke had already vanished. What was he supposed to do now? Like a traveler at night without signs or stars, Akira was lost. Nice. With nowhere else to turn, Akira resumed his trek to the hotel. <laughs> Somehow it's a little funny. He's just so defeated and he's just like, okay, fine, I'll go back to the hotel. So I can have a nice, safe place to sleep. <laughs> it was clear that something had happened to Keisuke after he'd gone missing. Those eyes, glowing with hate, were seared into Akira's memory. Keisuke had always avoided conflict. He had never even fought in Blaster, which was why Akira had been so reluctant to see him join Igra. The Keisuke who had confronted him just now bore no resemblance to the Keisuke he knew. If he'd been telling the truth about the club massacre, then it was all the more imperative that Keisuke, or that Akira do something. But what? No ideas were forthcoming. 
His original reason for going to the hotel had been to find a lead on Keisuke's whereabouts. Nothing would necessarily come of going there now. If he did nothing, though, he was certain that his thoughts and feelings would crush him. He decided to let his body lead him where it would. When he stepped onto the main street, he spotted the hotel just across the road. A few people were standing around outside. He stepped forward across the street. Akira. A high voice called his name, and brisk footsteps pattered in his direction. He turned to see a small figure running towards him. Rin's tone was bright. He looked up at Akira, smiling from ear to ear. A vapid response slipped from his mouth. Akira was in no state to keep his pace with Rin. Rin shrugged and mocked disappointment. He clearly had no clue what Akira was going through. Rin suddenly grabbed Akira's hand and held it up to his eyes. Rin leaned forward, eyes glittering, but Akira looked away with a tiny shake of his head. とりあえずさ、俺今からホテル戻るとこだったから一緒に行こう。話聞かせてよ。元にも。そうそう。ほら、クラブが偉いことになっちゃったでしょ。だからあそこたまり場にしてた奴らとか結構こっちに流れてき
くいつでもどこでも手に入りますってわけじゃないんだぞまあまあまあいいやしゃあないおいリえー、リンローズ・フォン・ザ・ソファー・パウリーいいだろお前豚たく腐るほどあるじゃないか数には限りがあるんだよリンポーデ・フェイス・ン・スタッキー・スタンギャー・フェン・ダッシュ・オフ・トイズ・ザ・バック・ザ・ロビーかわいくね Letting out a smoky breath, Motomi rumpled his hair while sinking into the backrest. Akira too leaned back and lowered his eyes to his feet. Wait, what? Lowered his eyes to his feet? Whose feet? Whose feet are you lowering your eyes to?、Uh... I don't like this. Gazing up at the ceiling, Motomi sighed as though to distract himself from the awkward silence. He appeared to be thinking about something. His fingertips beat in a regular rhythm on the armrest. <laughs> Akira automatically looked up. That wasn't Keisuke, Akira wanted to say. Instead, he shook his head. I mean, come on, there's got to be a couple people wearing blue coveralls, right? <laughs> I don't know. Akira understood his confusion all too well. Whatever rumors Motomi was hearing would likely be impossible to connect with the k e i s u k e he had met. Even if Motomi's network was useless, maybe Keisuke was deliberately trying to mislead people about where he was going. The current Keisuke seemed capable of that. Akira <laughs> looked away guilty. A small nod was the only repose he could manage. It felt like he was deceiving Motomi. いよいよおかしくなってきたなこの街もクラブのあれといいイグラと無関係のなあ要するにタグが取られてないってことだまあそりゃこんだけ治安の悪い街だからな殺しはイグラだけってわけじゃないけどなここのとこ毎晩23人は殺されてるらしいしかも犯人の目撃情報が全くない Was it Keisuke? Akira hated himself for the thought. Grinding the remainder of his cigarette beneath his heel, Motomi exhaled a smoky sigh. Akira wasn't listening, and Kuro couldn't help but agree. He was not listening either. It's not him. It's not him. No, but no matter how many times he repeated the words in his head, it did nothing to silence his growing doubts. I'll torture you nice and slow before I kill you. His throat closed up. He could still hear the voice hot in his ears. You mean hot on your nose and up your nostril? Motomi started to rise, his expression severe, but just then Rin returned, arms laden with medical supplies and water bottles. After setting the supplies on the sofa beside Akira, he looked back and forth between Motomi and Akira. After placating Rin with his usual easy smile, do you think they're. You think. Rin calls Motomi daddy when no one's around? I think so. Motomi finished standing up and moved to sit next to Akira,、uh, avoiding the pile of supplies. Motomi finished standing up. What a weird sentence or phrase. Like it takes so long to start standing up. He cleansed Akira's cuts with water, applied disinfectant, and slapped on a bandage, all with consummate speed and skill. So, yeah, Mani, t e a t e s t e t e u d o t a Oh. He completely forgot. Ma- 
悪い。気にするな。モノミ winked at him, then stuck a fresh cigarette in his mouth. Though the mood had earned up at last, eased up at last, Rin still glanced between them. His expression clouded. Oh, sir. Hmm? あのことはアキラに言ったのああ、ケンスケだろ。今お前さんが交換しに行ってる間に話したよ。そっか。Rin crouched next to a curious sofa and looked up at him intently. アキラさ、ちゃんとなんか食べてるフラフラの行動不能になっちゃったら、ケンスケとかイグラどころじゃないじゃん。なんか、アキラってそういうのどうでもよさそうだよね。It was true that Akira never paid much attention to eating. On top of that, his present situation made it hard to work up an appetite. The last time he'd eaten was. he couldn't remember. Even though it couldn't have been that long ago. Oh, son! I'm sorry to mock it. Yeah, I'm sorry to mock it. I'm sorry to mock it. I'm sorry to mock it. Oh, son, the economy is good. I'm sorry to mock it. Hmm. Rin considered this for a moment, then suddenly sprang to his feet. Ush, Kimeta! Kokan Stigre! Tate, Kokoja at the Nidoro? Kokara Ichiban Chikato, Tashka Minamino. Akira looked over at the cloakroom. He felt like Rin had traded for solids there once before. Looking more closely, though, he saw a piece of paper tacked to the wall. No solids. Perhaps the influx of customers from the club had drained their supply. All he said was oi oi. You know what? No.、Uh, we can't just move on from that. Oi oi. All he said was oi oi, and you said now hold your horses. Like, girl. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can't just. I can't just pretend I didn't notice that. Rin walked a few steps towards the door, then looked over his shoulder. Akira, With a jaunty. jaunty? That's a weird way to describe it. Do I understand what the word jaunty means? Hmm. With a jaunty wave of his hand, he vanished onto the streets. Let me exhale the cloud of white smoke. Are you going to leave me a dumb note that says I shouldn't have trusted you too? Yeah. It's kind of annoying. Rino is only running around like this because he was worried about Akira. Better than that, what? Better than. Wait. Better that than a Rin. Okay. No. Better that Rin was solemn and sad. Better that. Better than Rin. I can't. I don't know what the sentence is trying to say. Motobi spoke in a soft drawl, his eyes following the smoke towards the ceiling. This was Motobi's way of saying that he'd seen through all of Akira's evasions, but was choosing not to press the matter all the same. Whether this was kindness or its opposite, Akira couldn't tell. Akira nodded and hauled himself to his feet. Maybe Kesuke can make a little bloodbath here. That'd be cute. He left the bustling lobby and went outside. Slipping into the first alleyway he saw, he leaned against the wall by the entrance inside. The cold night air soothed him as it seeped into his lungs. Alright, guys, I think I'm going to end this episode of Taigano no Chi right here. In the next episode, I am praying Akira, or I am praying Keisuke is going to find us, strip us of our clothing, defile us. I just. It's been too long. See you guys in the next episode. Bye.